folks, Jonathan here. I'm back. Haven't done anything. I actually uh, went and picked up some uh, welding wire. Got my new torches today. Uh, I used my old ones to cut this, but even though they were leaking, because I needed to get them rolling. But they finally come in, so I'm tickled with them. Uh, all right, let me address a few things here. First, why would I build a rim crusher? Uh, I thought I explained it, or, or I guess I did explain it, but I guess people like to skip this video, so we're going to do this from the beginning. I've got a tire changer. You can take tires off the rim with it, but if you let a tire and rim sit out in the weather, and it, let's just say it sit there for a long time, maybe it got water inside of it, and there's rust inside the rim, you're not going to break it down easy and get it off. Also, you've got to move every tire to the changer. I can take this to the tires and wheels, the file, wherever I'm at. That's two things. But uh, if you think that you can take one off, even with a you know a new model or an old model changer, as fast as you can crush one and pop it out, it's not going to happen. And like I said before, I can get rid of tires and I can get rid of rims. I can make money off rims, but I cannot get rid of rims and tires together. Uh, not unless they got good tires on, or the aluminum rims or something like that. And then a lot of people don't even want aluminum rims. Uh, the scrap guys don't want to buy them if you got a tire on them. I think I've changed my mind on this. I've got a three-quarter plate I'm going to use on here. I'm going to weld these to the three-quarter plate. I'm going to put two little pins on the plate to go into them holes or maybe just one in the center or something. And I put one bolt in it. And I think that'll work out good. I just tacked these on to look at them. Uh, but we're going to change that, change the way I'm going to do that. Uh, I got my new torches anyway. I need to cut some five eight, or some three-quarter plate and and uh, just see how it does. So I'll just cut a new plate for that, weld them up, put them up on there, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, folks, I got all this finished up. And I'm working on the piece for here. I just got to do some locating, raise it up a little bit, do a little grinding, a little clean up. But it's uh, welded up in there, uh, three quarter inch plate. Now, it's not going to be touching on the sides. And it may bend that plate, but if it does, it's just going to bend it back to where uh, our other plate's already at. So it's not going to be a big issue. So we're going to have, we'll pin it from the inside and then we'll have one bolt through it. And then we can be able to take it out and take that off if we need to, just if we want to split wood. folks here comes test number one the new style let's see <laughs> That's what we wanted. One shot deal. This is what we want every time. But I was looking at this and it's got some imperfections here. Okay, it's perfect on this side. And it's done decent on this side. But as you can see, these hit here. And if I go forward with this thing, it comes drop it drops right down because it's stuck up under the edge right here. So I think maybe fixing our problem yeah because we've got a half inch cap in there so if it drops down a half it might help us out a lot uh, we may have to do something about that to get it up higher do not know anyway that's what they need to look like they need to do a triangle one here one here one there and it sort of folds it you know, in here and folds it around on each side. So. And now I'm running it idle too. I haven't revved the machine up at all. So 
Uh, I mean, I can run faster and run more pressure also, but uh, just not taking any chances on it until we can get things like we want it. We want it to work every time the way that it should work without having to mess with it and, and having to turn the rim and all that good stuff. So that's our go. This is what I'm talking about. See the rust and the water. That's the whole reason for doing this. If I was to try to take that off with a, you know, my old coats, it would be forever trying to get it off. And they don't come off that easy. And then of course, I'm paying to get rid of water and I'm paying to get rid of a rim that I'm able to sell if I get the tire off. And the only thing we got to do is make sure that we take all the weights off because uh, they won't take them if there's lead on them, not as number one steel. So, But rims bring top dollar, top price. You know, whatever steel's bringing, that's going to bring the most. All right, folks, uh, one more coat. We'll let this thing, uh, we'll let it sit here and tack up a little bit. We got one more coat on it, and we're going to call it. Now, this is uh, Ford Tractor Blue, and... A friend of mine moved to Missouri and he gave me this paint. It's about a half a gallon. And so I, we've got no money in the paint. And I think the center was 10 or 11 bucks, which I had bought it for, uh, let me see, a different project. I just had some left over. So, so we're still only into this thing for about, for about 80 bucks or less than 100 anyway. So we're going to go ahead and get. Uh, Get another coat on. I got a few runs and stuff on. Don't care really. I mean, I'm just trying to get it all one color. So, or color as my wife calls it, collar as I call it. So uh, we'll get this done, and then probably gonna throw a couple pieces of wood in it to see what it'll do. Splitting some wood. All right. So we're gonna get this thing pinned back on the machine here after it dries, probably this evening, and then uh, if it dries this evening, and then we will. Probably split a couple pieces of wood to see how it looks like, how it does. And then we're going to uh, call it a video and move on to the next thing. So, uh, I think what the plans are now, I'm going to continue to do some uh, history from the hardware store videos. Uh, not because necessarily that people seem to be watching them because they're not, but uh, view wise. But because my son said that uh, I told him I was going to quit doing them, and he told me he wanted me to keep doing them for my grandson. So we're going to keep doing them, and I've got a really good one coming up here soon, and then uh, be the probably put it on the weekend maybe. Uh, and then let me see. I'm going to go ahead and jump off this and jump on the Roadster pickup truck. Uh, I want to go ahead and get. We'll take the fenders and hood back off. I'm going to do a few things, but we're going to go ahead and get it to where we can get the engine started up and drive it and run it. Anyway, okay. Okay, folks. Whenever Charlie's picked up some uh, pecan or pecan, depending on where you're from, and uh, stuff's hard as a rock, we're going to see if it'll split it. And uh, I about broke my back loading the stuff in the truck. So if I'd have known he had so much, I think we'd load the skid steer loader up and went over there. So we're going to end up over there splitting before it's over with. <laughs>
Charlie wasn't lying, this stuff's hard. It's, uh, as you can see, uh, the grain is all intertwined. So anytime you get that, you're gonna get tough, but, but it worked and we got plenty more to this place to do. But all right, appreciate everybody watching. Till next time, bye.